So let's do this. And um, all right, so we'll definitely have more people joining in as we go along, but um, welcome everybody. This is the Ringing Cedars Community Connection Call. Um, this is a very special time for us to just sit and spend um, time with other Ringing Cedars readers, connect and spend some time in what I like to call spiritual fellowship. I think it's very important. We have people who come on these calls and say, I've read the books. Yeah, I read the books 12 years ago, and it's my first time speaking with a Ringing Cedars reader, you know, today. Um, and so that's always a very beautiful experience. So this is a time where you can connect with um, people of like mind. It's a very open conversation. We're gonna, the conversation is just very natural and it flows. So just feel um, open to share something when you feel like sharing something or just sit back and enjoy the conversation and enjoy the, uh, the energy and the space of what we're trying to do here. I'm very grateful for all of your time. I know uh, I canceled a few of these in the last month or so. I was going through a lot of life transitions. I moved, I'm in a new house, had a whole bunch of things happening, but uh, now we're back on a stable schedule. So this will be every two weeks, um, every Saturday at the same time. We used to do them at Thursday, eight o'clock p.m. Eastern time, which was crazy. Um, every Sunday, right? Yeah. yeah, every Sunday, my bad. Um, every Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. I was doing them on Thursdays at eight o'clock for like more than a year, uh, which was wild, but we did it, you know, and, and it's wonderful. So anyway, um, one thing I wanna uh, introduce to you guys before we start to go into the call is just, if you wanna think about um, something that you might wanna pose to the group, some questions you may have, or just some topics or ideas that you might wanna discuss, um, just like think about that in the back of your mind and uh, maybe you can bring it up if you know you feel like there's space. Um, I'm gonna share some things and you might wanna comment on the things that I'm sharing, but um, just think about it if you have something you feel like you wanna share in the group. Um, is there a way to call in from my phone in case your internet connection drops? I don't think we have the um, phone call feature thing on Zoom. Um, if your internet connection drops, you can download the Zoom app and you can come in from like the app on your phone. Um, but if it drops on like your laptop or something, um, that would be the way to do it. So um, how we're gonna open this up is Ariane uh, is gonna help us with a little guided visualization here to kind of set the space and get us in a good, in a good vibe. Oh, look at that. Do we actually have a phone number and I just didn't know about it? Is this true? Um, okay. All right. Well, I guess that's it in the chat there. Um, so I guess we have the feature. Uh, so just, <laughs> just bookmark that. Where did this come from? I never saw this before in my life. Yeah, you're amazing at Zoom. I've never seen this. I didn't know we had, I thought we had to pay for that. Um, okay, I guess we're paying for it. Um, that's good. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I do the events, but you know, we, I don't know how that goes. So anyway, um, Ariane, if you'd be so kind, please take the floor and guide us in your, in your wonderful way. Well, thank you so much, Gabriel. Um, for those of you who don't know, I host a bi-weekly call. It's uh, every, I was gonna say every second Thursday, but we're not obviously doing the calls on Thursday with you anymore, Gabriel. This upcoming Thursday is going to be the next guided imagery call. And we take essentially about, uh, it's about an hour, the call, and then you can stay on uh, afterwards the call if you like in a group setting. We hold a pristine origin imagery for our future life for our current life for all of the planet and it's a really wow. beautiful bonding experience yeah they are recorded and they are up on the uh, north america anastasia youtube page and um i still have quite a few more to post up so you can definitely go and check that out if that interests you you've got a few we're, we're anastasia foundation on youtube if you want to check us out yeah yeah, and uh, I did get some feedback that some of us already have a domain. You know, some people in the community already have a domain and the, a lot of the guided imagery has been, you know, about 
bringing the domain into our lives. So what we're doing now is we're starting to hold a pristine imagery for the air, for the skies, for the oceans, for the water. So I want to invite uh, everyone now, you know, it's not just people who don't have their domain. And now it's going to be more accessible to anyone in the community. Okay, so let's make ourselves comfortable here. I'm going to invite you to turn your audio off. If you don't mind muting yourself, we're only going to take a couple of minutes. And then make yourself comfortable once you have your audio muted. Perfect. Awesome. Make yourself comfortable. And we're going to close the eyes. And take a very deep breath. And again, take a very deep breath through the nose. So we're breathing together here as a group. We have Ringing Cedars community members all over the world and more and more people globally are finding this movement, finding the books, finding us, finding this community. So we're breathing together here as a group. Our breath is supporting one another. And there's also a global breath now that we are tapping into now. Apparently there was 10 million readers, if I have those numbers right, Gabriel, you can correct me there or not, but I believe there was about 10 million readers who had who uh, were recorded to have bought the books. And that was some time ago. More so than imagine 30, now. More than million copies sold. There you go. <laughs> and that's not counting all of the free, <laughs> the free PDF copies online and the audiobooks market. online. So exactly, yeah. So we're literally breathing with a collective heart and mind of, we could even say a hundred million or even more. So breathe that in now. We are truly growing into a global collective family. We all have shared vision for a pristine, thriving, beautiful future. Wholesome family dynamics. And an incredible connection with our beautiful Mother Earth. So we're going to breathe that in now. We're finding one another. The soul family uniting. Let's bring in an image here we can share together. Imagine yourself rooting down. So roots moving from your feet, your sitting bones, your body, moving into the earth. And the earth is very willingly receiving these roots. We're digging down. You're connecting with the root system of the, of a ringing cedars community member next to you. We're connecting our roots all across Canada, all across the US and anywhere else. If anybody here on this call is outside North America, we're connecting with you now through our roots. And again, let's take a full breath. On this call today, we're bringing in the 100 plus million spirits, souls who couldn't be with us here today. We're bringing them in and we're opening up the door to making all of our visions for a pristine planet, a pristine future. This incredible living and thriving global community. We're bringing in all of these images with us here today in this, on this call. Let's just take one more breath here together. Whenever you're ready, you can open up your eyes. Thirty million. Hey Gabriel, my goodness. Thirty million. That's incredible. I think that's it's incredible. About Thirty languages. And 30 plus million in, in, in English, uh, 700,000 copies 
um, from the Ringing Cedars Press. And then that's not again with the used book market. Um, so you could guesstimate there. I try, but I don't know how to calculate it entirely. But um, yeah, there's a lot of us. And that's the thing. That's why this whole foundation was created. It's to help, you know, find, uh, basically put a lighthouse for all the Ringing Cedars readers who are looking for their spiritual family. And that's what we are. That's what we're doing here. We are trying to bring everybody together. That's what I'm doing. That's what my life is about. So thank you, Ariane, for connecting us all in the spirit there, helping us feel that, uh, that brotherhood with everybody around the planet. And so, yeah, welcome you guys. Um, one thing I really love to do in the beginning of these calls is everybody can drop their location in the chat and uh, we can see where everybody's at. We've got some new faces here. I'd love to see where everybody's checking in from. I'm in a little place called, well, let's just say Quebec, Canada. <laughs> um, okay, we've got a bunch of Canadians here. We've got Hawaii, Medford, Oregon, beautiful there. Seattle, Washington, more BC. Lisa and Ariane, do you guys know each other? That's cool. Um, we've got Michigan, love Michigan. Got some great friends in Michigan. San Diego, California, must be beautiful this time of year. Dexter, Oregon, we love that. Springfield, Oregon, okay. We got a couple Oregon people in here. We love it. A lot of Pacific Northwest on this call today. A very heavily Pacific Northwest, which is interesting. The PNW is going to be covered in Kin's Domains. We love it. Awesome. Um, so I've got some updates about what's been happening with the foundation real quick. Uh, share some good news with you guys. Uh, Redding, California, suburb of Vancouver. I, I would love to visit the Shasta area. That's, that's still a dream of mine. I have never been up there. I just talked to a friend of mine who was in Lake Tahoe. Um, man, California is just such majestic land out there. Um, but yeah, I've got a few updates. Um, so as you see, I'm in, a, I'm in a new house here. So I appreciate everybody's patience with you know, the cancellation of the calls previously. So we're back um, you know, consistently here. Um, I did an interview on a YouTube channel called the Inspired Channel. I don't know if you guys saw that, um, but they've got like 410,000 subscribers or something. And uh, we got about 30,000 views on that video discussing the Ringing Cedars. Brought a lot of people into our community. Um, that's probably the most exposure that, uh, the Ringing Cedars movement has gotten in the English speaking language in a while. Um, so that's really exciting. And we're going to be doing more of those, um, with the inspired, uh, folks. They are, uh, dear friends. We're going to be doing more and a bunch of interviews are going to be lined up. Um, so that's, that's really, thank you for everyone who's here from, from that. Um, you know, John is, is an amazing friend. He's been following our work for a long time and uh, we've known each other on Facebook for quite a while. And that was the first time that we uh, got to got to speak. So it was really cool. Um, John's probably going to be helping us with a bunch of things. So that's really exciting. Uh, our community has grown a lot from that. If you guys haven't um, ever seen this website, we have the Ringing Suitors community platform. We just hit uh, 300 members today, I think, today. So if you guys want to check out our online membership platform, it's like Facebook, but for Ringing Cedars readers. So if you want to connect and find people near you, that's the place to be. Um, a, a lot of you here are already on there. So thank you for joining. And I, I had a couple topics on my mind that I just want to share, and then maybe that can lead into a further group discussion. And again, just remember that this is open to everybody. If you guys want to say something or add your opinion, this is totally open conversation. But um, I was rereading, and to Arianne's um, 
you know, discussions about imagery. I was rereading book four recently. I don't know how far everybody is in the series. And um, the parts about Anastasia's forefather and, um, you know, when he was in the tower and he had been sentenced, you know, basically to death if he wasn't going to give the priest the secret of the science of imagery. And um, when he was there and he was on his, you know, in the last moments of his life, the priests were worried that he was going to sing some song to the people about what they were doing to him and that he was dying and um, trying to expose, you know, expose them and their actions. But um, she said he was just singing songs about the joy of life, you know, and he was inspiring the crowd and all the people with the joy of life. And there's this recurring theme I realized through the books that in a story like that, uh, singing about the joy of life, not talking about the darkness that he's experiencing. Uh, in book 10, there's Anastasia's daughter, you know, Anasta, and she is dealing with this iceberg that's encroaching on her family land. I don't know if you guys have read book 10. Not everybody is aware that book 10 exists. If you guys need the PDF, I can give it to you. Um, so this might be a spoiler for those of you who haven't gotten book 10 yet. But when she's got the iceberg that's coming and everybody has to leave because of the iceberg, she turns her back on the iceberg and she begins creating this beautiful, um, you know, image in her mind of this where her family land uh, living and being green and flourishing. She turns her back on this darkness and just goes and creates creates the light and there's a few other places in the books where that's happening like uh, where um, I think it's it's Radomir and his wife they're being invaded their kin's domain is being invaded and um, when they're at their last moment and they're about to pass away they you know the I think it's the Roman soldiers are gearing up to shoot them with arrows and they just you know get on the ground and they hug each other and they're thinking about their next life in their kin's domain, and they're only thinking about life. And there's this recurring theme in the books of completely turning your mind away from the darkness and just looking towards the light, you know what I mean? And creating uh, what it is that you desire and not letting fear invade your thoughts, you know? And it's a powerful thing, but um, it's a beautiful thing, and it's really got me thinking in my life how I'm trying to do more of that, you know, just uh, focusing on the goodness of everything around me and the things that I'm trying to manifest and the good that's coming from my heart and my soul. And, um, you know, Anastasia says, when you give yourself over fully to the marvelous reality, as she calls it, the attacks of the darkness won't have any effect on you anymore. You know, you'll become resistant to the dark things around you when you give your mind over to the light, you know, and that's kind of a big thing to say, but you know, that's how, that's how she says it. She says, she's talking to Vladimir and she's saying, you know, um, don't be afraid of, of the dark forces or whatever. And um, when you give your mind over to the marvelous reality, then you will be able to withstand whatever it is that they throw at you. And I say all that to say, it's like, it's a crazy time that we live in, in the world. But every day, more and more, I see all the things that are happening in the news. I see, you know, all this social unrest, all this like political things going on. And I just honestly, I get more and more excited um, because I just know that there is humanity is at a point where there's only two paths. It's, and I was just saying this to one of my friends earlier on the phone is that you either go and you keep living in the technocratic world and you are, you know, in some way, whether consciously or unconsciously supporting Support. technocracy and just like living in it and doing that thing, or you're on your path to walking hand in hand with God and living in the garden. You know what I mean? And, and that's it. And there's, there's only two ways. And, you know, each day that passes, humanity is just diverging more and more into each. Eventually it's all going to be, the garden that's where we're going you know but there's this time of like purification of 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 where we're at now 
And, um, you know, I, I'm thinking of the story of Anastasia's forefather, where even in the midst of his, you know, he's captured um, and he's on his dying breaths, and, but he's singing to everybody about the joy of life. You know what I mean? And uh, I've, you know, some people ask me sometimes, like, uh, what do you think is going to, like, happen in the future? Or what do you think is happening? And I'm like, we're going to win. Uh, you know, everything is going to be good. I'm, I'm not worried about it. Um, I see the beautiful world being created every single day. Like, look at everybody on this call. You people are all so inspiring. Like, to just speak with each of you would lift up anybody's spirits. You know what I mean? And um, just... You know, Anastasia said that everything in the news is just, um, it's the, the death throes of this dying system, basically, you know, that that system is dead, it's dying, and we're creating the new, and uh, we're writing the book of the future, you know, and so I'm really just thinking more about that, about how many times in, this, in the books, that idea of completely turning your mind over to the light and the good and only focusing on that is is repeated you know uh, even in how anastasia deals with people like she doesn't you know speak to the bad of people or scold people she just is always speaking to their highest potential all the time and treating people with dignity yes. and respect even people who are trying to attack her i mean not tr trying to say like if you're being attacked you defend yourself you get what i mean though she it, she comes from this level of like understanding people's souls and just trying to bring light to them and um, it's a beautiful thing you know and so that's kind of the the kick i'm on lately this is what i've been thinking about but uh i just wanted to share that with you guys because i'm i'm really inspired about that idea and um more and more each day i'm just more excited because each day that passes and all the crazy things that we see in the media it's one more day towards kin's domains being everywhere it's just one more day and Every day we get closer, you know, and um, every day this movement is growing and every day everyone here on this call is doing more. And um, it's just really exciting. I'm at a point where, like, I can't be deterred mentally. Um, and it's just pretty awesome. So I just wanted to share that with you guys and, you know, see if that sparks any discussion. I had an image come to my mind, Gabriel, when you were saying that. From now on, I'm going to walk like I have 30 million Ringing Cedars community members bes yeah. <laughs> beside me and around me. You know, what a feeling. I've heard this feeling. I've heard this saying before, walk like you have a thousand ancestors behind you. It's true. So, Because uh, <laughs> you do. So now we can bring in this concept of like we literally have a global family. And I've seen so many people jump on the community network platform, jump on the Telegram platform. It's incredible. And I can't tell you everyone every day, uh, Wyatt, he's not on this call today, but Wyatt and myself, every day, we've been opening up groups. We're fine. We're making connections. Here, We're like way, getting hey. events. Oh, he is? Where is he? he Wyatt, he, I didn't see you. I'm sorry. You turn the gallery. <laughs> <over>. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. Here. I'm still here. No worries. <laughs> he's here. <I'm> <laughs> You weren't on my screen. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. You're, keep you're, going. You're, keep we, going. A thousand okay. answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wyatt and myself have been, it's incredible. I don't know. Wyatt, what do you want to say about this? It's unreal, the momentum. Yeah, I feel like it's ready. like more and more each day. Inspired leadership is like the currency, you know, it's like everyone's like catching on. And then, um, I want to use like Ellen Mary's words here. She's like, she, she calls it quickening. She's like, it's like something happens and then it's, it's quickening. And it's so true. Oh my gosh. It's like more and more, we meet people each day and they're like, Hey, I'm going to do this. Hey, I'm going to do this. And it's like, Whoa, where did you come from? What part of the galaxy are you like? How did you, how did we meet? And now we're both. It's amazing. It is so amazing. Mm -hmm. I think we opened, I think there's been like four new groups that have opened up on the community platform in the last, like what, week or two? Yeah. It, and there's like people that. stepping up who are saying, hey, I want to offer services. I want to offer an event. I want to offer, you know, um, leadership and all its different expressions. So I think we're feeling the call right now, you know, all of us to start contributing in our own unique ways. So 
I, I just wanted to share that with everyone as someone who is in the, the background doing more of the um, like coordinated group work, you know, with, uh, with Wyatt, it's outstanding and we have so much to look forward to. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a big time, you know, we're, I'm grateful that more and more people are finding our community, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And um, I'm just, yeah, every day, more and more excited about the direction that we're going. Um, you know, this idea of, of just creating what it is that we desire and um, because, you know, the universe wants us to succeed with everything that we're doing. We have bright images of creation and we are trying to fulfill God's dream here by turning the earth into what we're desiring to turn it into, you know, by creating happy families everywhere, by planting trees and, and bringing children into a space of love and building this kind of life, you know, the life itself wants us to succeed and the life within us just grows the more we tune into that dream, you know, like the more we tune into it. And uh, I've been, every night and every morning, I've been um, rereading the series for the last like uh, two weeks I've, I've started. And uh, I've found that's been really powerful for me to keep me tuned in. You know, I'm the, I'm the executive director of the foundation and even me, you know, is, is tuning more and more into it um, and just letting it go deeper. Like if you reread, if you read the books some time ago, I'd highly suggest that you go read them again because I read them in 2014 and Jesus Christ, it's almost 10 years. Um, but, <laughs> um, but I find that it affects me in a, in a much different way now than I did when I read them before. And, um, it's really powerful. Ha has everybody here read the books? Is everybody familiar? Um, or if you haven't read all the books, how, how far have you gotten? I'm just curious. Book four. Okay, so you're, you're going through that the first time, Alex, what I was talking about with Anastasia's forefather. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Uh, yeah, just what you were talking about. Like, I, I was uh, reading a little bit past that last night into the uh, other worlds. Yeah. Um, so yeah the book of kin 2014 brian just completed book one we we love that though we love that there's a new edition of book one by the way and uh, i always wind up mentioning this on every call but uh there were some chapters added to book one in the russian edition which haven't been translated into english yet but i've got them uh, if anybody wants them, it's pretty roughly translated into English, but yeah, I should just like make a permanent file where these files live in because I always share them on every call, <laughs> but um, I'll upload those in the background here and share them with you guys. Um, it's pretty roughly translated, but it's really awesome. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Gabriel, actually, because um... Dima, who I've been on the call with a few times, on, on Arian's call a few times, uh, he was asking me if I remembered these stories from the book, and he's starting telling me about one in particular with a Svetlana, and yeah, um, I didn't that's know. A new one. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't know the story, and so he said that yeah, there must be some new new chapters added um, more towards the end. So I would be really excited to read those. Yeah, it's true. The, the stories are really powerful. I'm literally uploading those now as we speak and I'm just going to have a permanent place where I share them because I wind up sharing them all the time I just sent them earlier today to somebody else too uh here we go upload them yeah the Russians are, are blessed you guys just get the new stuff and it's in your native language and I'm working on publishing the books that is hopefully going to happen by the end of the year um I'm very hopeful that we could get book one done within six months um so Gabe, Gabriel, can can you put in someone was um had messaged me? Can you put in the community platform link if you have that pulled up real fast? Sure, I got you. I got it from memory. Just <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Sweet. There yeah. it is. And I don't know if that's the most friendly URL, but it's on that URL for certain reasons. But anyway, Anastasia.foundation forward slash community. And pretty soon that'll be an iPhone app as well. That's something I um, am gonna dedicate 
some of our budget too is to getting an iPhone and Android app so you guys can log in and message everybody on your phone if you're inclined to uh, use your phone. So that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was talking about though. We were talking about the new chapters. Oh, I was asking where everybody is in the series. Um, yeah, this is exciting. We've got people from all over um, in the middle of book three up to book four, book five. Yeah, you guys are getting into the real good stuff. It really starts to pick up around book three, but when you get to book four, forget about it. Um, book four is, is incredible. So let me share this, uh, this folder with you guys. Do, 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 public link, boom, boom, copy in the chat. There it is. Those are the new chapters. Um, again, translation's rough, but I'm lucky enough to be friends with the Chinese publisher. She got the manuscript and she, uh, from in Russian and she translated it for us. Um, so that was cool. It's like Google Translate with some edits. So like, you know, <laughs> be, be generous with your, with your, uh, you know, opinion of it. Um, anyway, yeah, guys, I don't want to keep, um, I'm going to look for a translator for the books. Um, I'm putting together a budget for everything. I think I have a rough budget of what it'll take to do book one, but, um, I'm looking for a translator. Yeah. I'm about to start looking for a translator. Um, I'm pretty confident we're going to get the copyrights. There's no way I, I don't see us getting the copyrights. So that will be happening. So if you guys happen to meet a Russian translator, then, uh, then please, you know, I was thinking of doing a Kickstarter. Um, I'm not entirely sure about it. I think we'll be able to fund it ourselves. Bruce, good to see you, my friend. Thank you for joining. Bruce is an amazing person here in the movement. Um, we're very grateful for Bruce. Bruce is the founder of the Veterans Village Kins community in Arizona. He's been building a lot down there um, for a long time. And uh, yeah, good to see you, Bruce. Um, <laughs> Good to finally get on one of the calls without missing it all the time. Yeah, um, I know. And you look like you, you have free time now, which is great. unusual for yeah. me on day, so it's good. Yeah. Oh, it looks beautiful over there. Are you in Arizona right now? Yeah, I'm on uh, Svetlana's and mine's Kin's Domain. I don't know if you can see behind us. That's the garden. We're putting in the living fence. We're building a pond. You know, the whole, you know, we're doing it as, um, as it's, as described in the books. That's right. Amazing. Well, guys, Gabriel, I have a, I have a question for you. Please. Um, I'm curious, what is your internal feelings like these last couple of like this last year, I would say like, it seems like the momentum has really picked up and I know you've been at this for a while. So yeah. like, is it just becoming like very lucid for you? Uh, or like, no, I, I've point. Yeah. I just like, I'm curious about that experience for you. Cause like, I, I have not been behind this as as long as you have. And so I'm sure yeah. that comes with like this. Yeah. It's so like kind of how I see the movement growing right now. Is that what you mean? What? Like, yeah well I, yeah and kind of like your, how, to, how i feel about everything that's yeah. happening yeah your um, own personal experience with it yeah my my experience is that i've been trying to organize you know doing everything i can to help organize the ringing cedars movement since like 2014 basically before i was done with book one i pledged my life to doing this work and uh, i basically started where i could at the time and was still able to connect a lot of people and have just been doing that ever since. Um, Bruce was there at our, at our gathering with Vladimir McGree in 2016. Um, you know, you know, so we've, we've been doing this a while. There's like 70 people in the room in New York city. Um, on July 23rd, we got very lucky to do it on his birthday. And, um, how I feel about what's happening is it's exciting. I just feel like the movement is coming alive now like it was growing steadily and slowly um 
but you know, we, besides Nina McGree's Facebook group on Facebook, we officially now have the largest Facebook group on Facebook for the Ringing Cedars. And there's not that many of them. There's only a couple. Um, we literally have the biggest English speaking Ringing Cedars community. And I still feel like it's not even 1% of what it's going to be. You know what I mean? And once we just start getting in front of more people, um, there's so many people and it's beautiful to, my feelings are, I'm really inspired. I'm really excited. I'm, yeah, like what you said, it's, it's becoming reality. Um, just watching all these people get connected at a bigger scale is, is my dream. And um, watching it happen every day is very fulfilling. And seeing, you know, the community that we're building, the kind of fellowship and brotherhood that we're building here is very touching to my soul. And um, just watching it expand every single day is, uh, is insane. You know, having incredible collaborators like yourself, Wyatt, Ariane, Stefan, Bruce, uh, all the other wonderful people on our calls and in our community. Um, you know, it's, I hope, I hope that answers your question. I don't want to turn this into the Gabriel hour, you know, I feel like I'm talking too much guys. If I'm no, uh, no, not at all. No, I was, I was just curious because it's like, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like we're all intrinsically connected in this. So, you know, like how, how you're feeling, I think it's like how we're all feeling in a certain way. Like, I don't know if, you guys saw like Arian posted this video, this tuning fork. Like I, I felt like a little kid again. I was just like eyes wide, like no way, really? Like watching this thing happen, like it was crazy, you know. And I, you I like think a that's tuning really fork vibrating or something. Well, so it was like a tuning fork, and then it was another tuning fork that didn't get oh, hit. Sympathetic resonance, right? And it was so crazy to watch, and it was just like that's what's going on here. Like we're all bouncing each other and like we're quickening each other's senses and like our understandings. So it's so cool. That's why I guess I'm curious about your, um, because I feel like, yeah, I mean, that's how I, I'm just so excited lately. Like it just keeps elevating up. Like my sister who hasn't even read the books, she's like told me the other day, she's like, I just feel like happiness just keeps getting higher and higher. What I thought was the limit one day. And then I wake up and the next day I can get happier. And it's like the same, it's That's the same. You know, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You rarely hear people talking like that, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and I'm noticing that, you know, people are, are becoming more open for whatever it is. Um, whatever reason, general people are becoming more open to the bringing Cedars ideas. Like on Wednesday, I'm going to be speaking with my, sister's fiance about the ringing cedars because he saw my video on the inspire channel and he he loved it and uh he wants to hear more about it i said i gave my sister the book you guys should read it together you guys would be so happy living on the land and you guys would live a beautiful life together and uh, he's like you know i want to hear more about it like let's do a zoom call and um like you know and people who would never be interested in this like friends from childhood and we all grew up in the city together and now everyone's curious about it um people are becoming more open just in general um I, that's why i'm so excited man that's why i was talking about it earlier it's like every day there's only two paths that we're going it's either walk hand in hand with god and live on the land or live in the technocracy and that's it there's no black it's black and white and people in their souls are going in you know either direction but like i'm just i don't know i don't know what else to say I'm, you know Sorry guys, I feel like I'm talking a lot. I hope this is like, like enjoyable. I really want to get some discussion from you guys and, and get this thing going, you know? Well, well, it's cool, Gabriel, that you're, you're talking so much. We, li we, uh, we missed you, uh, I guess, the last couple calls got canceled for yeah. one reason or other. So it's like, you know, we, uh, it's always, always good to reconnect and, and, uh, you know, you've been at this for a long time, putting so much into it. Um, good to hear what you've been thinking like this past uh, month or so, or however long it's been since the last community call. Yeah, I appreciate that, Brian. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just in a super inspired place. Like we're starting to get more invitations for interviews. 
I'm hoping, and maybe you guys can help me out with this. I can post a link to the Facebook thing, but I'm trying to set up an event with Vladimir McGree, uh, like an online event with Vladimir. I got to email Nina. We know each other personally, but she's looking for people to like, you know, she's trying to set up events with Vladimir in various languages. And if it's not us for the English language, I don't know who it would be. You know what I mean? Um, so let me drop a link to this Facebook thread and you guys can go in there and like comment if you're, if you're on Facebook, because I'm trying to get her to do it. Um, it would be crazy. So like, that would be fun. The last event that he did in English was with us, which was in 2016. Um, so it's like, gotta make this happen. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, the, the movement is about to start growing a lot. Um, pretty pretty shortly i'm very excited to make some progress on book one this year um the most important thing to do is to republish the books um the, the a set of books now is like 350 dollars, which is insane um i feel bad because when i got into the series it was 16 bucks brand new um and i got them used on ebay for like four dollars which was crazy to get you know the first like four books for like four dollars um, with inflation, $16 new from 2014 money is like $19. So when I publish them, I'm going to try to publish them around that price to just keep it as, accept as accessible as possible. Um, well, I have a question about that. Yeah, for sure. So the black covers versus the green then, because the black ones aren't as expensive. <laughs> is there a difference or is it just the covers? The, it's just um, the second edition is the black covers. Yeah. And there was some like footnotes added and there was a few little like corrections there, but mainly it's like a bunch of footnotes um, with things that, you know, just updates on things that had happened. Um, okay. And I think the green covers are more rare uh, too. And so that might be a thing with the price. Um, yeah, they're hard yeah. to find. I just got like one through six for 225 and I had to piece out the rest and I'm trying to buy a set for my mom and I'm having to buy them one and yeah. here over there for from it's, four different eBay people and it's crazy. <laughs> That's the green ones. I haven't I wasn't I thought I heard somewhere that the black one had a different translator or something and was a little different. So no, it's the same um, translator and same editor. Um just there's some footnotes and things changed and a few like text edits throughout. Actually speaking of the green covers, Bruce owns the original paintings on the green covers uh which is really cool um bruce maybe sometime I, I remember we were talking about making some prints of those and um you know setting it up so people can buy those but yeah that yeah that's here, beautiful here here's the, here's a couple things for the community one i have a bunch of green books and black books all except book number one all right so if anybody is missing a book just text gabriel he'll text them to me i'll have my assistant up at my ukiah house send them to you by the way gabriel we did send those to australia the eight one and eight two awesome. 75 dollars to ship them there i there should have go. turned that lady on to bruce in australia because i believe he's living in australia oh, and he's he, the... i have buying number ones from because i have no ones so if any of you guys are missing books in your collection i'm going to go ahead and you know, i can liquidate my collection i don't care just tell, tell Gabriel which ones you miss. I will send them for free. There's no charge. All right. And when Gabriel gets the, the, done with the books, getting the, the, the rights to the books, I will put up the money to, to print them because I build kin's communities. That's what I do. All right. They're one square miles. They're, you know, they're, I've been working on the first one for eight years. The prototype's out in Arizona, kinscommunity.us. No, that's the first kids I think community. It's community org, Bruce. I'll look it up for you and drop it in the chat. Um, dot com. Kins yeah. Community, yeah, Kins domain or Kins, no, Kins, Kins domain. Community dot com. com. I just dropped it in the chat. Yeah, but there's another one where I'm at right now, 15 miles from the Ecoville. I call it Eco Village or Kins Community back and forth. I'm at Svetlana's. She's my ex Russian wife, the Russian spy. That's the first Kins domain I built on and because i went around the country 10 years ago looking at all the kins communities and it was a joke i mean everybody was trying to do stuff and nobody was doing it right and this guy wants eight million dollars to buy this acre that you can't subdivide into two and a half acre plots so i said you know what i'm gonna build one and that's kinscommunity.us that's one you'll see it's eight oh, years old 
yeah, that's where I t t made the hemp camp. I, that was before I learned you're supposed to make short videos, okay? And that's when I'm showing you how to make kins, the, those candles that I'm sending to Russia. Yeah. You know, I'm sending 10 so, boxes to 10 communities in Russia. Yeah, one of the a, cool things, just so people can know, because it's such a cool thing that's happening, we have a, we have a program called the Russia America Exchange where we do questions and answers with like founders of kins domain settlements in Russia, people who are founders of schools. We, the next one is uh, February 19th, by the way. Um, so if you want to join us live, that uh, will be coming out. But we've got a wonderful woman on the ground who's very super well connected with all the settlements in Russia. And we're sending, well, Bruce is sending uh, a lot of gifts to our Russian brothers and sisters as part of our exchange. So we've got 10 different settlements that we're sending stuff to. And they're going to be sending us some stuff back. And we're hopefully going to be opening a international marketplace where the uh russians are able to sell their things with to us and uh, other north american kins domain creators will be able to sell things too um so that's something that we're working on bruce where is where in arizona is your 25 25 miles north of kingman 90 miles from las vegas is, is that where um is that where the recent um uh, Sasha Stone event was held back in July or August. What was it called? Uh, Sasha Stone and um, Patriot Street Fighter guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was there then. You've got the domes. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. We have a lot of events. And with the difference between now and when you were there, I bought, I got, and this is the model for Kins communities. Look, I'm creating an economic model that'll make this thing fly really fast and we can build, because we're behind the Russians. They got 500 Kins community. They're we're going to catch up. Bad, Bruce. Wow. Yeah, I know. So we've got 30,000 solar panel packing pallets on the property now. I'm building vendor booths, you know, as quick as we can, because we have events there with 10,000 people. The next, let's see, there's a, there's one called, um, uh, the summer of weed on 420, which I don't think will happen, but for sure I know that the One Love Festival will happen, and there'll be two to ten thousand people there, and I'll have two thousand of these vendor booths built. Then the next month, then every month we'll have a vendor a vendor booths. Built I mean, out of, a, built out of pallets that were reclaimed from a solar installation that was going in, and Bruce went in and scooped them all up. Yeah, let me give you the economics on that. They have to pay to get rid of those pallets. So the guy that would got the money to haul him away, I met him and he said, just drop him off my land. I should have gotten paid to haul him away, but he got paid and he gave him to us for free. That's $600,000 worth of wood for free because we do reclaim wood and we know what the value of those pallets are. You can do that on any Kins community that you're building anywhere in America because they're putting in solar installations all over America. So I have a place in North Carolina. I asked Sandra, are they, can we get some, are they putting in any solar panel? Yeah, sure you know 25 miles from our plant in north carolina they're putting in a solar farm so that is a raw material source for the kins communities events make you so much freaking money we have the one love festival may 13th that'll be a, the next real good festival that we have and i said this time i want 45 minutes up on the stage to describe what a kins community is i want people to come there so they can see what we're doing and Bruce, learn about when is that when is that may 13th Oh man, I got to be able to come to the U.S. Can I give a presentation? Is that cool? Absolutely. I have. Look, it's my stage. It's my land. You can do All anything right, you let's want. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Cool. I got to be able to cross, but uh, I think I'll be able to figure that out. If you can time. get Gabriel. I'll get you forty-five minutes on the stage, and then I'll take another forty-five minutes to do a talk about it because they're at a kin's community. They're going to want to know what is this place because it's pretty phenomenal. By you the know, way, I've presented at festivals before. We have other festival connections. I don't know if Wesley was telling you, but um, yeah, we got to do more of that. <laughs> Good. Because that's how you expose people to. Sorry, I was just asking, are we able to come visit? Are you there all the time or just connect with you? Um, well. I'm just in Prescott, so. Yes, I now. I, yeah, I'm renting a house in Vegas because something just happened in my industry that demand that dictates I have to be here. Vegas is 90 miles. Did you come from Vegas when you came out I, to the I land? To Prescott. Well, I went to Vegas and then went to the event in, on your land there. Yeah, but I live in Prescott. Okay. 
you know, it's going like an hour and 40 minutes, including the dirt roads right. to get to the land from Las Vegas. So I'm renting another house. Yeah, so I'm renting another house in Vegas. I will be here all the time now because they just found that CBD A and CBGA is a cure for coronavirus, at least perceived in the media. Oh, and I'm, I'm going to text you about that. Uh, I'm glad you found that. Yeah, I know all about that. We know the science. We know what, what does work, what really doesn't work. It doesn't matter what I believe. The market believes that that's just a cure for coronavirus. And we're the second company to go to the marketplace. And we'll be at Champs in Las Vegas. So I have probably about 30 salesmen to work that floor. And that means I have to be here because I could write $100 million in business in the next week. And, I, and then hopefully I'll invite all those people to the Kins community um, next week, you know, after the Champs is, Champs is an expo, a trade show. Um, and uh, industry, we're right? all, so, you know, but I'm looking for how does a Kins community start and make enough money? That has always been my goal, to make enough money. Everyone wants to move back to the land. Come on, it's not rocket scientists to go move out land, but how are you going to make money? That's my focus. How do we make money do it, moving back to land and building a kin's community? And that's my whole dream is to build kin's communities. As many of them is rapid fire uh, as I can. So my model for kin's communities are duplicatable, cookie cutter. You can do them over and over and over again very rapidly. So to your, to your point, Bruce, the last Russia-America exchange call we had, Andre, who is the founder of a settlement um, that's been going for more than 20 years, he was saying that a big income source for them is festivals and events where the people living on the kin's domains can sell things um and they make a lot of money from doing like the uh ringing cedars festivals bard concerts and and stuff like that and actually he was saying that you know one of the biggest ways that the um the movement grew in russia was from the bards traveling around and giving their music concerts from the soulmate festivals that they were doing um, as Anastasia described. And so, you know, you being able to like open up your land and do these um, events, like we, I want to have an event down there as soon as I'm able to travel, like a Ringing Cedars event. And we need to start doing them all over the country. Um, and yeah, um, we need to document more how people can make money on their, on their domain. There's a lot let, let, me give you, let me give you the economics that I was told. Doing events is new to me, all right? So it's brand new. The guy, this guy named Nico was running the last One Love Festival last year. All right, the guy is awesome. He's incredible. He's just a brilliant guy. Functions really good. He does all the, uh, the Trump events in mar lago He does events all over the world. And he said, Bruce, you can make $50 million a year on your property. Now, if I can make $50 million a year on events, and he's not counting – I like events because I sell a lot of stuff at the booths myself. Right. All right. I have a bunch of companies. But if he says fifty million dollars events, now that I'm drilling down into events, I can see where the money for events are. You build a, those vendor booths. I'm making it so you can put your can, a tent behind it. Now I have glamping vendor booths, glamping tents. You know, you throw a tent up there for five hundred bucks and put a bed in there or something. They're a thousand dollars. And who go to these transformational events? Or sort of like the rich hippies, I'm learning, like yeah. Burning Man's twenty twelve hundred dollar ticket. They hit all the festivals. <laughs> yeah, and they buy stuff at the vendor booths, and they and so they spend a lot of money, and they can afford to have a lot. Of, I can see where the fifty million dollars a year comes in. Now, if you don't make fifty million dollars, okay, you make two million. That's a lot for a community. For sure, even if it's once a year. Um, yeah, and and Alex has his hand up, so I want to give Alex the floor real quick. Yeah, just a, a quick question. Um, so, uh, I, you you've been looking into ways to make money on Kinsamain, um, Bruce. Like, do you have um, ideas about um, how we should be directing our energies um, uh, as we we think about um, going towards living on a Kinsamain? Like, is there any uh, skill sets that you think um, you you see often? come up that would be useful to have um, transitioning into that lifestyle? Does, does that make sense, that question? Yes, yes, I have 200 ways to make money. The first way I started with was I modified the two and a half acres to add one acre of hemp. I'm Hemp Inc., a publicly traded company. I'm in the cannabis sector. I was a smuggler when I was in my 20s. I went to jail. I'm real notorious for making a movie on my life, all right? So 
that's my industry. So you grow, but I didn't want to do marijuana. I wanted to do hemp, right? So you can grow one acre of hemp, and in some cases, one acre of marijuana, where it's totally legal. You know, there's nothing illegal. No one's going to go to jail anymore for that. So that was the first model. The second model, if you go to kinscommunity dot or kinsdomain.us, you'll see I made hemp gemstone candles. All right, and that's they're, they're a hemp wick, a hemp wax with gemstones inside of them. I mean, I went overboard. I put three to four hundred dollars worth of calibrated cut gemstones, and I had a barter company, so I just had them laying around. And those are what I'm shipping to Russia. A box of those to each community, and on the top there's a label that says Kins Domain Certified, Arizona. So it shows you that we can have our own certification that it was made on a Kins Domain. Then all the Kins Domains all over the world support each other. They sell my products, I sell their products. Right. So I'm starting off with giving them a gift. These are nice, beautiful candles, and then they'll send us some stuff, and then we'll set up real commerce. So we, we actually sell their stuff. Second, okay, so then you got the, then redwood burl furniture. We only use reclaimed wood, and in that series of kinsdomain.us, you'll see there's like tw 20 videos. There's one from NorCal Wood Products. He makes redwood burl. I'm getting a thousand slabs sent down to um, to um, to, to the Arizona. I shipped a bunch of slabs. I didn't ship them. I had them there in North Carolina to a guy in North Carolina and said, go make, who makes Redwood Burl. Do you know these slabs are 10 to 20 feet long? You finish them, that's a $10,000 tabletop or bar top or $20,000 one or a clock for $350 or $250 or an end table. So that's the third way is Redwood Burl furniture. Fourth way is events. You want to definitely have events. All right. And I, didn't care about making money on events. So they were all for free in the beginning. Now I realize there's economics of events. So that's the fourth way is you have events. Um, the fifth way, these posters, as soon as I, you know, these posters, they're not a revenue stream for me. So when, you say, when you say posters, you're talking about printing out the original paintings that were on the first editions of the books. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So my plan would be to, I'll print them. I'll give them to Gabriel. He'll sell them and we'll do some kind of revenue stream. Because to me, I'm not looking to make money off the books or the posters. That's advertising for my building of physical kin's domains. The more people that see those posters, the more people that read the book, the better it is for me. That's why I'm willing to put the money up to print as many books as you want. And thank you, Bruce. And um, I'm glad we're, we're having that conversation now. And you're already doing a lot for us. So I appreciate everything you're doing. And inside of the books, uh, I wanted to say, just so everybody knows, inside of the books, like, you know, if you compare the experience we're preparing for the new books compared to the old books, the new books are going to have at the end, it's going to have all these links and descriptions of our communities and all the ways people can join. There's probably going to be a QR code that you can scan that'll open the Ringing Cedars app on your iPhone. And, and so... There's going to be, it's going to be very action oriented. And when those get printed out, people are going to find us. And this, this whole thing is going to grow a lot faster. And speaking of the bards earlier, um, I decided that our publishing house uh, is going to also publish English language, uh, Ringing Cedars inspired music. So we'll also be releasing that out to the world. And I didn't know that that was something that the Anastasia Foundation did in Russia until rereading the series recently. But uh, I guess that's something that they did. They started publishing music in, in 1999. Uh, but I realized that the music played a much bigger role in spreading the movement than we as Americans understand. Um, and it's just the direct experience with Russians is confirming this to me. Um, and the music carries the vibration of the consciousness. Like they say, every movement has its music and we need to have the music of our movement be available and distributed. So that's another thing. Uh, I have AnastasiaPublishing.com and that'll be the name of our publishing company. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing. That's so exciting, Gabriel. That was one of the questions Ariane and I were going to ask you is like, we have started creating um, music with um, the talented Rhea. I wish she was here. Um, she was, she's not here. Oh no, okay, Rhea Johnson. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh my gosh. And it has been so magical. And um, we've all kind of like really felt this like magnetic pull. And one of our questions, you know, to each other was like, how are we going to, you know, we don't just want to post this in like community groups. We, we really want this to be publishing. Available. 
right we, we got it i i can and, cool. and thank god i can build out all the infrastructure for digital uh distribution and downloads and all that stuff or physical if you wanted to do that uh, i'm web designer by trade so all this is super easy for me like so we're gonna have marketplace and all that stuff set up and it's gonna be great so yes awesome. I'm, I'm yeah as means that's so cool to know and I I feel like the music is, is going to be such a big part of things. <laughs> it's, it's huge. And one of the reasons why I realize it's so important to me, you guys may or may not be aware, there's a community in, in north of Nevada City in California called Ananda Village, which was founded by one of the disciples of Paramahansa Yogananda uh, in the late 60s. And it's an incredibly successful eco-village. Um, you know, obviously eco-villages are different from Kin's domains, but it's a very beautiful community that they have created there and very successful. They have a very large nonprofit. They make millions of dollars um, and spreading beautiful spiritual teachings. Anyway, super successful community, like more than a thousand people living there. They've got eight of their communities around the planet, uh, which is cool. But um, one of the things that their founder said, he said that um, before he started writing and publishing music, you know, um, people would come to the community and then they would like leave, they fizzle out. But he found that the music is what drew people to the community and, and made them stay. Like the music conveyed the vibration of their teachings, of their spirituality, of their consciousness. And the music created a, a way for everything to be coherent um, and for people to understand it, like with their feelings and to, to come and stay. And so music is super important and it's something I'm going to be focused on. Um, by the way, there's a mute that. All right. <laughs> and so Willix, I see you had your hand up for a minute there. Go ahead. Yes, uh, this is a question for Bruce. You know, I, I hear you talking about like all the money that can be made with the uh, events, you know, like $50 million, that's a lot of money, but it also translates into a lot of people. And so, are you talking about like one event at a particular location? Are you talking about multiple events at that location? Are you talking about events at multiple locations? You know, to, to make that type of money, you know, how is that spread out? Because, you know, part of the, the lure of the Ken's domain to me is, is kind of getting away from all that commercialism and being able to be out in, in nature. And I know it takes money to make all these things work, but how much, what does that look like in terms of uh, how does it impact the Kins community over time? Or how much time does it take to make that kind of money? Is it a weekend, like a whole week long type of event? That's a question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I will definitely ask Nico that, you know, and yeah. And um, from what I think he was, he was thinking, he didn't go over it with me. I said, okay, great, great, great. I mean, I run public companies and start public companies. So this is a, a side venture to me, but I believe he was talking about multiple events at that land and probably one a month or one every other month. If I'm building vendor booths, they're permanent vendor booths. It's you use them. And by the way, we're only using like probably it's 500 acres, this portion. And then my normal kids are 640, but this one's 500. And the, the events only occur on like less than 100 acres. So not a lot of the land is used. And then we have two 4,000. That's a, that's a 10,000 person event, by the way. Yeah. And that's, so that's small. And then we have two 4,000 acres around the mountain. So we can be totally isolated and you know the event concept is new to me it's not new in russia obviously and it's obviously a part of this movement so i don't know the answer to that um but i'm you know i'm finding out like you know the first event i let them use my jeeps i let them use my excursions my my, my sprinters i let them use all my heavy equipment my domes and they ruined everything <laughs> i'll never do that again my motorhomes my fifth wheelers okay no you're not going to use my jeeps you're not going to use my sprinters you ruined them all they, I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, they get flat tires. They got stuck in the desert. And you're not supposed to do that. You can rent them. But so I was accommodating because I wanted to spread the Kins Domain message. All right, the Kins Community message. I wanted a lot of people to know about it. Well, that's done. They're all coming. It's, it's locked in. So the $50 million, no clue what he was thinking. All right, um, probably, I would guess, one event every two months which just seems normal to those guys or one event every quarter, you know, every three months. To me, I think you should have an event every month or every weekend of some kind, a bigger or 
smaller one, because if you got the infrastructure on a small part of the property, you know, it really doesn't impact, especially when you have living fences and trees out there that block the people, um, you know, and the event from the community. So that's, that's what the Russians do is that on the larger settlements is they have dedicated spaces for their festivals and events. It's not on the individual kin's domain of anybody there unless they invite you to come see their kin's domain for whatever reason. But they do have sections of the settlements that are you know built out for that and they have like common areas and things like that um, and infrastructure and things like that all there. Um, and they have like a festival season in Russia where there's more festivals, um, you know, I guess it's like the late summer is when that all starts to happen, the festival season. Um, and so that winds up being really big. And that also helps them um, get people who join the settlement as well. So I know you're, you're probably talking about, um, so you're probably talking about like the impact on the land, right? Like if there's 10,000 people or if you're, um, you know, having that many people, um, I guess it just takes some education up front and saying that we're- Let, let, me, let me interject about this 10,000 people. Sure, sure. In, in America, any of those people who've gone to Burning Man, Burning Man pioneered events, huge monster events out in the middle of nowhere. At the end of Burning Man, they have what they call the Moop Squad, Matter at a Place. They will pick up every toothpick on that land. So these people are already trained to come in, pack it in, and pack it out and clean up every single speck of uh, of anything uh, on that land. So they're, they're, they call themselves burners. And this has been going on for, you know, decades, I think. I don't know how long old Burning Man is. But there's, you know, from Burning Man, they came out with, you know, 50 other transformational festivals, you know, um, Yoga Fest, Bhakti Fest, Lightning in a Bottle. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Zero Point, Love, you know, Love Fest. And those things are picking up in general in society. So they're pretty conscious people that go there. I would say 90% of the people are extremely conscious. They, if you don't recycle, they'll go nuts on you. So you have to recycle everything, which is appropriate. And they do clean up and they do mind and care for the land. And they, a lot of them want to move back to the land. And that's where you get a lot of the people, oh, we can stay here or we can come back here and buy two and a half acres. Yeah, so that's huge. The festivals don't destroy the land; it does the opposite. And, right. and a well, lot of people who haven't even read the books will wind up feeling something when they come to an event. Like this is what I hear from the Russians, and they'll join a settlement, and then they will read the books after. But they'll be perfectly in line spiritually even from like the beginning, even if they haven't read the books. You know. And I'd say with events, it can be as big and or as small as you want. So we're musicians, and we put on various things and we found a good formula is full moon parties. You do like one, you know, once a month, a big thing you can have, you know, and that seems to be a good place to start and it's a good place to get the community together. It's a good energy and time, time of the month to do it. Um, and then maybe like one bigger event and when, whenever the weather is best, stuff like that, you know, you can scale it up or down, however it fits your vibe. <laughs> Well, my, my experience with the events has been primarily just with the Oregon Country Fair. It's and, funny you said that. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that draws like, it's a three-day event, but it takes like about six months to get it ready and then another few months to, you know, to clean up from it and everything. But, you know, and it draws about maybe thirty to 40,000, maybe 50,000 people for that weekend. And it's huge. They have 21 stages all across, mm -hmm. spread across this land. And... Uh, you know, and it's big, and it's and it takes a lot of work, a lot of labor to just manage, you know, an event that large. And I don't know how much money they make. I know they make millions of millions of dollars, you know, for that weekend. But it's 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 a lot of work. Um, and the volunteers that come, they may come for like two or three months and just camp out. You know, uh, you know, the booth that I work at. You know, I'm I'm a co-director with the camping crew, and we have like about 60 people in just our booth alone. That we have to take care of and that's you know it's it, it entails a lot of work for that weekend and and when you're done you do definitely want to you know be done with uh, a lot of all that uh, commercialism because it's it's work you know i like the oregon country fair model um because the one thing i like about it is versus burning man is they build permanent booths there 
you know, those booths are there next year, they're there. And it's, and, and it's to me, it's a waste of money to spend, you know, literally hundreds of millions of dollars on art cars and all that infrastructure, Murray man. And then it goes away. Use that money to build permanent, you know, bathrooms, permanent kitchens and cafeteria. So the country fair, I love that model. Um, but if, you know, and I don't know how that works internally. I just been there a few times and I just really liked it a lot. And, uh, but imagine, you know, we may be an all year round event. I don't know, but the full moons, the lady mentioned full moons, every one of these vendors, I'm just providing the land. They do all the work, right? The, these event people, they come in, they get their own security, their own medical, their own uh, everything. All right. And I'm just easy to work with because I'm not going to gouge them on the land. I want people to see the land. So they do all that work that the Oregon Country Fair people do. So that's not on me to do, but they all want to do it on a full moon. So, and they're fighting for who gets the full moon in May and June and July. And so, <laughs> that's a great a, crowd if they're all fighting over the full moon. Oh yeah, no, that's where they all want to go. And then out there, one of the most peaceful times in my life out there on the eco and you know, the veteran village kins community was when one guy was up on the stage, it was cold. It was like this time of year, last year and it was a full moon it had to actually be a full moon there's like four of us in the audience or five of us who just you know we there was it wasn't an event and he was up there on the stage playing a guitar and it was so peaceful and so beautiful with just one guy and five people in the audience all right so there could be 50 people in the audience and one guy so the full moons i imagine i'm projecting in the future what is likely to happen the full moons will be the one love festival you know, the, 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 you know, the um, summer of weed, I don't know what Shaggy's festival is going to be called. And, you know, a lot of people will have their big events. They'll come in, they put it all on. It's not on me. And uh, I just do some kind of rev share. And then during every weekend, there'll be a smaller like little concert, a bunch of people going up, going up there, playing on the stage. Cause you know, Schooly Palooza, which is that school bus thing where all these schools gather desert um they're gonna they, they just they're having it's happening right now you know there's people who refurbish school buses they'll all come up here from quartzsite and they want to use that land as their schoolie palooza next year because they got kicked off the land down in quartzsite for yeah. some reason i guess my kittens <laughs> i like kittens because i'm one when of I, when i was in russia um they had multiple barred concerts at the settlement within a 10-day period like separate barred concerts at the settlement within a 10 day period and multiple like parties and things. And so, you know, like, like Bruce is saying, he got all these recycled pallets, you know, basically for free, just went and picked them up, is building permanent vendor booths there. And now is going to be doing events there all the time with this permanent infrastructure that he got like for free, the building materials. And so that, that is something that we could replicate, you know what I mean? And, um, doing events, um, like on a semi-regular basis when the season allows, letting people come and just camp, uh, even if you don't have infrastructure, just telling everybody to bring their stuff and then making sure that they clean up everything. Um, and even while they're there, uh, I, I was part of an event where um, while we were there camping, we were helping build new infrastructure for the settlement too. So like people could volunteer their time to like, um, you know, help build like permanent bathrooms and stuff um while we were there and paint the buildings and people were happy to do that you know so those are all um viable uh options you know yeah i can say something too actually um so well i think what you're talking about is finding finding ways for settlements all over to have their own events um so not just right now there's not very many settlements but bruce we have you down there who has a lot of a lot of land that that can i guess um provide a template for how we can have events in our smaller settlements. Um, right now I live at a, at a community, um, we have like 88 acres here, but one of the things that we used to do before COVID was we would have uh, first Saturday dances. And so that was, they were just called ecstatic dances. And that was where everybody would come, like people from town and you know, lots of people. I mean, we had maybe about to like 150 people. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't big. And it started out as being like donation based, but then eventually it got to be like bigger and bigger. Um, where we, we needed to start charging for it. And it was, it was a lot of work. I mean, it started with one person, you know, who's just hosting these ecstatic dances here. Um, 
but it's another it's another way i mean they were beautiful like people would come together and um and just dance and so that was the whole thing it was just about dancing dancing together in a safe place you know because like there's this culture in cities like this club culture and um i didn't like to go to club culture dances and i didn't like i didn't want to go to the club but then there was this like safe space that was created for people to dance and not have it be around alcohol or around anything anything other than um, than just dancing, but then there was also like a sauna on site and a hot tub on site and then like we would work that into having a work party like you were talking about Gabriel and so people would come yep. together to like to help build things and then from you know We also have like larger events too as well Like where big musicians would come in and play and I think like the biggest we had was like 470 people or something and then we have like a big commercial kitchen that people we you know shared to to cook for but it was a community event like everybody got together everybody would like lots of like most of the people here would, would, would be involved somehow in, in, in having these people on their land. One of the big problems that we had was that there were neighbors that didn't like what we were doing. Um, you know, and so like really like working with the neighbors that we had was, was one of the challenges. So I don't really know how that will, that will look for kin's, for kin's settlements, you know, having to work with like, don't piss off your neighbors kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's just one of the, th one of the things. I mean, maybe Bruce, if you know, if you have any information on how to deal with neighbors. <laughs> I don't yeah, think as a musician, yeah, it really well. depends on the neighbors. That's huge. Um, but for the part of a community is that it's like all these people that it, the music events would be for the community. So that all your neighbors would be involved would be the, that's the dream for a musician. <laughs> yeah. Here's how you deal with your neighbors. You hire them all. <laughs> I was going to say, unless you're giving them money, I'm not sure what you're going to be able to do you unless they're hire just gracious. Yeah. You know, when we put zero point out here, a guy actually who put zero point out came to me and goes, Bruce, did you pay the police not to come here? I guess I said no. I didn't know what he was talking about. I mean, first of all, we're so far away that, you know, you can't hear us. And all of our neighbors work for us. You know, John Bishop does the grades, the roads. The other guy is does the construction, you know, helps us. With, so you hire all your neighbors. Uh, that's one way. The other way is you just shoot them, right? Uh, we have veteran village kids community with a bunch of post traumatic stress disorder veterans. You know, they'll shoot anybody. <laughs> that's a joke. Because, um, uh, but you land. do. I mean, look, I'm I'm a real spiritual person, but I was a big smuggler, so I have that side of me that can be very assertive and aggressive. And that side of me that operates from the heart. That's all I do. I operate from the heart. And, um, you know, so, and you guys are young. So you, it's, it takes years to develop the patience and tolerance to deal with red deck neighbors. All right. I can deal with them because I'm supporting veterans and most of them are veterans, or a lot of them. And they like that. And they like me because they find out I was a big smuggler and they say, oh, he's cool. So you sort of bridge the gap and you're slowly like, pace i call it pace and lead you pace and you lead them to you know to to a more spiritual con higher consciousness um by the way where is here you said here on 80 acres where is here oh i'm in dexter oregon where in dexter oregon where is that southern central north um it's it's two and a half hours south of of portland about an three hours north west of ashland by Eugene, do you know where Eugene, Oregon is? It's, it's actually yeah. really close to the country fair. I mean, well, like an hour and a half away. Yeah, we have facilities in Medford. Oh, cool, okay. Mm -hmm. For hemp. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And, and by the way, one of the things that I'm remembering from Alex's question earlier about like making money on uh, your kin's domain, one thing that I, I noticed like with a marketing background and a web design background is that uh, more people should learn the basics of internet marketing, especially in the day and age we live with. The ability to get in front of people for either free or low cost is astounding. And that's a marketing opportunity that a lot of our I love the Russian though. Um, so, <laughs> but uh, getting, getting educated about, you know, how to market a business before you get on land and how to, you know, the basics of business um, before you get on land is, is a hugely smart thing to do. Um, for example, one of the couples that was going to come speak on one of our Russia America exchange calls, um, but they weren't able to make it is they are the founders of a settlement in the Belgorod region 
and uh, they just run like an online um, gift shop, you know, selling things that they produce on their domain. And it's mainly through an Instagram account uh, is where they get a lot of their exposure. And so they learned, you know, and you don't become successful on Instagram by accident either. You have to learn how to take good photos, write good captions, use hashtags, right? Like using the tools of the dark forces against them, as Anastasia says, you know, in service of the good. Um, and so like when you guys go on the Anastasia.foundation website and you see how beautiful it is, it's like, you know, because I spent years and years learning web design and it's good that that website is so beautiful and usable because that gives credibility to our movement. And, you know, it's the same with anything that's being marketed. Um, and so I'm not saying you got to go all crazy, um, sell your soul business kind of thing. Um, but marketing is really important and learning how to, you know, position yourself in the marketplace and get exposure is, is super important. So like before you move, um, having some kind of plan for your business, what it is and how you're going to get, you know, clients or, um, you know, customers is, is important. Thank you, uh, Gabriel. That was a really um, uh, insightful answer. Um, it's actually interesting because I, I like I've had these dreams before I even heard about um, uh, kin's domains of like having a family business and sort of like having it mm. almost run off of a, a piece of land. Uh, it's just like first when you just said that, it just like it it, it sparked all that those ideas coming up again. Like, yeah, I could actually do this. Like, this is the direction Good. that that I, um, I could go and like, I could almost make those dreams come true. Um, uh, so it's, it's very yeah, interesting yeah. to hear it's, about that. <laughs> I didn't no even like connect it before. So, I mean, just, it's, it just takes a little bit of marketing knowledge, a little bit of business knowledge, because one thing is that many people are good at a, at a trade or some kind of skill. They're very proficient in their skill, but being proficient in a skill doesn't mean you're going to be proficient in business or marketing. You know what I mean? Those are like completely different things. You can be incredibly great at making like redwood tables, as Bruce would say. But if you don't know how to go out and get the clients to buy your tables, you're not making any money selling the tables, even if you're incredible at, at the tables. And so in this day and age, like it's so easy to get in front of people for free or low cost. You just have to learn how to produce content that will catch people's attention. And you have to learn a couple other things, like depending on your business, like do you have to do SEO like locally and be on Google search results or do you have to, you know, do some other thing. Um, but like, it's all achievable. Like, thank, you know, thank you God for the internet where we can do things like this. Like I, I have a web design business that I run from home sitting in this chair that I'm sitting in right now. And you know what I mean? And I don't even have to work for clients. It's super easy, but I like put in the work to get myself there. And uh, it's, you know, Anyway, it's really important. And I think when we're thinking about building settlements and I, and I love Bruce's passion about this is like teaching entrepreneurship to people who like want to build, you know, Kim's domain. Um, and, and one of the things that Andre, who is the founder of the settlement, who spoke on our last Russia America exchange call said, he said, when you're building a settlement, you want to have a few entrepreneurs there who like will be able to launch some kind of business you know, that'll be profitable for the settlement because somebody's going to have to fund the thing. You don't want to, you know, we need, we need money. And Anastasia talks about the future of these Russian settlements. And she talks about like the Siberians making millions of rubles per year, um, selling cedar oil. And, and then they take that money and they invest it in projects for the settlement. Like we need to be successful in some degree, you know, like, um, it's, it's really important. So I just, Gabriel. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing I want to add to that is I feel like, um, yeah, money is very important. And um, I'm very involved here in the community that I'm living in, um, or that I live in my small little town. Um, but what I'm really what comes to me when we talk about all of this, um, and that I think it's a very valuable um, thing, at least it, for me, it, it kind of like keeps me in this state of like, um, I don't know, I, it feels really easy to get lost in that whole marketing um perspective at least in my brain it's kind of like i feel like i just get pulled into that um and so i think it's important for us to like recognize too that like what we're going to be creating is going to be the next cool thing so to speak it's going to be naturally attractive like people are going to feel 
the essence of like the things that we create and they're going to be drawn to them in the same way that all of us are drawn to a book, you know, that has now changed our lives. So, you know, it's a matter of like, yeah, I don't think we, we can't sell ourselves short by like, you know, not making a website and not doing like the proper, um, you know, advertising, but yeah, but, but like in another perspective too, it's like what's coming to us is going to come to the, us like, like we're going to receive that support because the whole world um, is going to start looking at people who are happy because they're not happy. So they're going to be like looking at domains and realize like, Oh, valuable things come out of those domains. And that's going to be the um, currency. It's not so much going to be this, like, I don't know, high tech thing anymore. It's going to be this thing that's very like, you know, grounded um, with like who the people are, the quality of the product um divine commerce divine economy i think that's really like where we're moving but so to your point why and i'm going to drop a link in the chat that might be really interesting for you guys to check out and bruce especially you should check this out um this is a link for a very successful king's domain settlement called radisvet in um in russia and one of the things that they do and why it's speaking to your point about the lifestyle and the image of the lifestyle being attractive to people um, you know, this Kim's domain lifestyle, the thing, the thing about it is that the story has to be told, you know, like we have to put in some effort for telling the story and getting the story in front of people and marketing. You could just say is storytelling. You know what I mean? It's literally nothing more than putting your story out in front of other people in a way where they want to consume it. And the interesting thing is that like this settlement here is growing a lot and is very successful, but like you can look at the incredible job of telling their story they've done on their website. If you just scroll through, you see pictures of their land and their settlement and everything like that. And they've got this really amazing tool on there that like shows the available plots of land on their, it's like a 3D map with footage from a drone. You know what I mean? Um, it's Yeah, that's it's, pretty epic. I'm looking at that right now. Wow. Yeah. And these guys are amazing. And it's a bunch of entrepreneurs who started the settlement, a bunch of marketing guys. And the thing is that they know how to get their story across to people in a very compelling way. And it's important, you know, I'm not saying that we all have to turn into like, uh, you know, polish and sheen, exaggerating things like, you know, photo shoots and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But uh, right. telling the story because, you know, people will, there, there's, you know, people will hear about it organically too, for sure but it won't hurt to, you know, put ourselves out there, like, um, in a, in a more structured kind of way. You see what I mean? Totally, totally, totally. Yeah. No, I just think it's like for my brain as a, you know, person like, you know, dreaming, and I'm sure a lot of other people, it's like, it can be like overwhelming when you're trying to move from this, um, consciousness of a world that is totally devoid of anything divine, um, into this world that's like, above uh, or just totally permeates all of that so um it really just like for anybody else you're on the call like at least that's what like my heart is just saying kind of like you know all things in balance that's all you know? yeah i mean everybody's approach is different too i'm not i'm I, I shouldn't say that everybody should do that you know uh like do the marketing thing in some capacity um some people prefer to let the fragrance of their flower just waft naturally and their every approach is valid um, it just depends on the results that you're looking for. I mean, you shouldn't take action if you don't know why you're doing it and what you're trying to get out of it. Um, but I don't know, maybe Bruce, you can, you can speak to the point of marketing because Bruce is an insane um, marketer in his own right. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We're both very passionate about the entrepreneurship thing. I have a website called Kim's Domain Academy. Oh. Where I want to teach this to people, you know? Yeah, here, here, that's the power of a community. In a community, you're going to find, and I've been doing this for like eight years, okay? So you're going to find that, oh, this construction guy uh, is a web designer also. Oh, and he knows how to do this. And he knows how, So the community is where you're going to find your resources, and you work as a community, all right? So this guy knows how to build this, and this guy knows how to do that, and that guy knows how to do that, and you work as a team. Okay, Juan and Rebe. Here's the, the, the thing I like to illustrate this. Juan Enrique, he's the head of the Harvard Business School. 
right? He's the former advisor to the president of Mexico. And he wrote the book, As the Future Catches You. He said, the day of the individual is over. The day of the Mahatma Gandhi, the, the John F. Kennedy, the Martin Luther King, that's over. The power today is in the network. The more diverse your network, the more power you have. So a kin's community is a network of people. The kin's community movement is a network of communities. Do you have any idea the power that we command? When we all become channels of distribution for every other kin's community's products and services that they make on that kin's community, I mean, my list goes on and on of what you can make in a kin's community. You know, I'm in the mar I'm, I'm the hemp end was in the marijuana growing business. We grow 10 pound plants. Do you know what you do if you use that technology to grow tomatoes? Which we are doing. We grow tomatoes and watermelons the size of a cucumber. I mean, huge, the size of your head, a tomato, all organically grown, all right? So you can make so much money. I think just doing microgreens near Vegas because we have all those hotels that want microgreens was like 125,000 a year. Just my, a little microgreen you know, thing in your living room or in a spare room. So just growing the food sciences, using the advanced technologies that we bring from the cannabis industry, you know, to grow the tomatoes and cucumbers as big as the marijuana plants. So we, the, there's, the list goes on and on. So you got people that like to farm, you have entrepreneurs, you have web designers, you have people that are really good at money. I mean, I'm a great entrepreneur. I couldn't care less about accounting. I suck at it, okay? Well, my girlfriend's got a degree in accounting, so that's good news. <laughs> so so, so you, everyone has their strengths. The village, the community, that's where you pull your power from. You work together as a group. And yeah, it reminds me somewhere in the books, I don't know who said it, maybe it was grandfather or somebody, but that idea of planning for diversity in the settlement, you know, like when we're starting to go out and form these settlements and, and building communities like we should try to have some level of intentionality of like who's joining us and try to make it as diverse as possible just like nature and permaculture like you know forest gardening the more diversity the more resilience and um you know one of the things i want to do is um i actually got this idea from the russian anastasia foundation but vladimir was talking about in each kin's domain settlement having someone there who could be a point of contact for the anastasia foundation in russia so that way it could connect into a larger network of communities as Bruce is saying, because having that infrastructure of communication will be huge too. And I mean, we're way out in the future with that. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the next few years we'll see the development of the first settlements, but you know, that's all in due time. Um, but yeah, I I'm all about that idea. You know, the idea Bruce is sharing, like how much power we have, like that's why I'm so excited to get the books out. Because when we republish the books, we do it in a better way. More entrepreneurs like Bruce and all these amazing people in the world start getting connected and, you know, coming onto our platforms and speaking with each other. We have so much wealth and power and, and skills in our network. It's insane. And it's just like we're sitting on it and we just don't know each other. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, I know I'm all in hopeful dreamer land, but it's all going to materialize. You know what I mean? You're hopeful dreamer land because you're young. Let me be really clear about what I'm doing. I have 44 Kins Community Corporations set up with 163 million shares of stock of my own personal stock, hemp being, it's not that much money now. You know, it was a lot more when I set it up. I, for, to, to start Kins Communities. And those are mostly for Florida because this is just a demonstration because people are going to look, we got Wi-Fi, we got live streaming video out there and people are going to look at it and say, if this idiot can build this in the middle of the desert, I can build it up in Oregon and I can build it in Florida or Tennessee or North Carolina. I, so the funding in large part is there. I mean, I gave one of those Kins Communities to Gabriel to do the online community. All right. Now he can't sell that stock for a year, but it's, a year it's, from now. It's pen no, we should be able to sell it immediately because it's going to the foundation. All that's in process. Oh yeah, it's a nonprofit. You can yeah. sell it immediately. Yeah. All that's yeah. in process. We still don't have so, it yet. So how, how fast can you move? A lot of times determined by how much money you have to move with. Yep. Right? What's your cash flow? And this year 
I put together a lot of stuff. I mean, I do an enormous amount of stuff. And now I'm going to organize it all and create cash flow to our movement. You know, I've given away $44 million in nonprofits as of 2014. It's probably closer to 100 million now. I just haven't added it all up in the last X amount of years. But as of two, four, that was the number. Pat Chams, yeah. Beautiful Free Hospital in West Virginia, Keepers of the Wild, Wild Planet, Feed the Homeless Group, Michael Beck with Agape Spiritual Center, his wife for her kids' camp. So I'm a giver and I'm going to continue to give on a level that is pretty cool because the level of wealth that I see coming in to give to the communities, the kins communities, because that's what I do. That's the way you change the world. You know, is to build the whole planet's going to be kins communities. I mean, those books were right, right? And if you remember that one book I asked you to send me, the, the one chapter, well, I hadn't re, I have to reread the books for the third time because I didn't realize that though, that couple, they were worried about they didn't have a kin's community because every square foot of Earth, of the planet Earth, was already taken up in kin's domains. Yeah, this and is that's, book 8.1, I believe. And this is when they create life on uh, this other planet. And they because did the whole that. Earth is filled with kin's domains. Yeah, the whole earth was done. It was. It was. That's what. That's what we're where we're going. Make no doubt about it. The entire planet will be kin's communities and kin's domains. That's what this yeah. planet will become. And then we're starting it. And at a certain point, it moves really, really fast. I don't know when that point is. I just knew the speed is unprecedented in our historical past. We have no framework to describe how fast something can go. But that's how fast that she said that our position in time is determined by the consciousness and aspirations of, of the people. And so that we can basically time travel if we change our consciousness. If people's consciousness change like instantly, like when they read the books, then our position in time as a society changes as the consciousness changes, which is why I can't wait to get the books out. I'm dying over here. <laughs> I'm dying over here. It'll be the result of like that 100th monkey effect, you know, once we get enough people that are into the Kins, you know, ideology and they're resonating that 24-7, 365, then it's just going to like articulate itself into the, uh, into the consciousness of so many more people. Right. Uh, and then like people, people like Bruce and I get connected. And so now Bruce is sharing his resources and knowledge with the greater community that we've built here. And then you know, more and more people start to find us and build these connections, you know, Bruce, like, I think we were talking about on our last call that we're, you know, we're going to wind up finding other people like you to, to help with this movement. Like it's all, it's all there, you know? Um, and, you know, God bless you for everything that you're doing and have set forward for, for the people. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that's going to be pouring in, you know? Bruce, I have a question. One more. Uh, I was born in High Point, North Carolina. And so I'm just curious as, you know, as to where in North Carolina do you have like the properties that you're looking at or you've already claimed? Well, no, we don't have properties. I have the largest hemp processing facility in the Western Hemisphere in Spring Hope, North Carolina. It's 85,000 square feet on nine acres. And that's 45 miles east of Raleigh. 12 miles from there, I have a, I have a house that I own. Um, which is only 12 acres. So the, I don't have a land there to build a kin's community. I'm fo I grew up in Florida, so that's where I want to focus. And Florida is flat and it's no mountains and it's real easy because my kin's communities are not circles. They're nice, they're, there's a squares and it's just cookie cutter duplicate. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of the, of the rendering uh, of it's our kin's community. Website, I think uh, kinscommunity.com. I think people can see it there. Yeah. So Florida is my focus, except now my girlfriend wants to move to my house in North Carolina and she wants to build one in Tennessee and my ex-wife's in Arkansas and Missouri. And so I'm going to go wherever the universe tells me to go. I mean, I'm not really doing anything that's doing me. So I sort of have a free flowing kind of unstructured, although it's now it has to become very, very structured for at least a year. Because put the structure in, put the things in, get the get a a pattern going, you know. Like when I was in prison for nine years for being the king of pot and the largest marijuana smuggler in West Coast history, I had a great routine that was very structured. I right? and so um, now I now I'm going to put to spend at least a year putting structure together, focusing on the financial 
uh, me mechanisms to have the kins communities emerge. Bruce, we should probably connect at some point soon because there's a lot that I've been thinking about to, to help forward what you're talking about here. Um, so we should probably connect um, sometime. Yeah, uh, give me one week to get through the Champs Expo cool. um, this week. And then we should, because, you know, we really do. There's a lot more that we could be doing together than we are, both sure. because, because we're both busy, but now we're, now we're converging. Yeah, my, my schedule is starting to free up. And, you know, I guess for full disclosure, with the donation that Bruce is going to be giving, I'll be able to uh, leave, you know, kind of close the doors of my web design business and just run the foundation 24-7. Um, and so with that, I mean, things will start to grow a lot. You know what I mean? Be a proper executive director of my foundation here. Um, so, you know what I mean? A lot of things are going to start happening. And yeah, Bruce will we'll be in much more. Yeah, you know, much more touch. Yeah, congrats. Amazing. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, yeah, we're, we're very grateful for Bruce. And, um, you know, it, it's all about, it's, it's spiritual brotherhood. We're all here serving the same mission. You know, we're trying to, God had this wonderful, has this wonderful dream for humanity, this intention for us to live. Anastasia expresses it so all of us know about it and get invited into the dream. And we are the hands and feet of, of God and, and manifesting this, this work here. And uh, so that's all it is, you know, pieces to the puzzle. All of us work together in our own way. And uh, it's a blessing to be connected with, you know, everybody here. <laughs> I have a question to the lady that was on my property at that event. How is it that you ended up going to that event on a Kins community and now you're on the Kins community? I love it very much. I don't know. I don't. But which this 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 community this that you're on now, Gabriel, or going out to the land? What you mean, being here? Yeah. How did you come to the forum? Uh, a friend of mine who's on here told me somebody said the Anastasia books are the greatest. Somebody somebody had asked what are your favorite spiritual books. Somebody said Anastasia. Started listening to YouTube. Somebody that reads it got a little frustrated with how they were read and. Well, I get to buy them, and I'm just sort of, honestly, a little obsessed right now. So, um, matter That's of fact, awesome. my grandson, who's eight and a half, he keeps saying, "God, when is when is this whole COVID stupid pandemic thing going to be over? It just needs to be over. I'm sick of this." And I said, "It'll be over when we stop focusing on that and start focusing on imagining and creating the future that we know we want and that is for everybody." And that's, you know, this is Anastasia's message is so, yeah. you know. She actually said that Vladimir talk. talked with her recently about COVID and she said, uh, what you call coronavirus is nothing but a living, thinking energy substance. And uh, it will have a dialogue with humanity in the language of action, is what she said. Jeez. Yeah. She yeah. says- Can you it, write that it, in the chat, Gabriel? Yeah, I could find the quote exactly. Um, I republish it somewhere but she says it coronavirus is created by the energy of thought and submits to it and coronavirus will have an enter uh, a dialogue with humanity in the language of action so exactly to your words i didn't mean to cut you off there i apologize no no, no that's great that's great but yeah I, I i find it very um i don't want to say ironic but um divine it's like you had you left there was a little seed there i must have picked up and got in my shoe and as far as i didn't know it was a kin's domain i wouldn't have known what that was that you had there i just knew it was a veterans kind of rehab thing or something and um you know there was a maybe a hundred of us there to see uh, sasha and, and um patriot street fighter guy and um and uh russell gould on the you know sovereign uh, national sovereignty movement and uh, so wow that's that's amazing and just real quick question for you bruce so what are you doing with that you're selling off two and a half acre sections or pieces on your yes i am i am and i am not okay we're talking i've been talking that about gabriel um how do we do the induction process right how do you yeah. get somebody in there it's a big discussion I, I never intended to sell anything out there. I, I intended to do it as all demonstration. Now the universe changed and I'm selling, yes. All right, but who do I sell to? How do I sell to it? How do we do it? Do we have a, you know, do we have a one year 
Yeah, there's all kinds. It's there's, there's a debate going on. We can I, we I'm, can nail out this process if you want. I guess we'll have to connect on that too. I mean, if you have somebody on the team who can get on this, like we can get the blueprints. You know, we can make it happen. Well, you know, Gabriel, when I was you, we talked about, but someone sent me ic.com, international communities. They yeah. there's a ton of templates on there for. How induct people into your we've, your we've got, international we've community or your been sharing a lot of that information with us like we've even got documents and stuff um that they use um internally um so a lot of it from you know the russians i can help give to you you know is that for yeah the vetting process you mean or just yeah the, the vetting process and how how people um get involved in the king's domain settlements and things mm -hmm. like that, that makes sense yeah, so that's a really important thing. So, I mean, Bruce, it seems like we got a lot to talk about, but I want to help you as much as possible with that because I want your settlement to be an incredible success. Like you've put so much effort into it. Um, I really want yeah. to. Well, we're at critical phase and because too, too many people want to buy land out there now and I have to, I have to accommodate that, but I'm not going to accommodate that until I have the proper induction. So I'll hook you up, Gabriel, with the okay. guys that are working on that. The, right. Mostly it's the people that bought land out there already. They're people I know for years and years and years are the kind of people I want to want there. And it's only been a couple of people that I know enough to sell some land to. And now they want to put together these, you know, these protocols. So, uh, but, so yes, we are starting to sell land. Um, and, but we have to create the proper way of doing it. I do not want meth freaks and alcoholics. I'm sorry. I'm very compassionate for meth freaks and rehab and mental ill people, but I can't tolerate them right now. I'll build Looney Tooney Kins community. That's one of the 44 for crazy people and bipolar people. For now, you don't want them in the building of the infrastructure. I need straight, non-drug non-crazy, non-mentally ill people out there, which by the way, the first wave of volunteers and helpers out there were 95% meth addicts and, and alcohol. And for full and disclosure, all like, you know, Bruce, because we've talked about this privately, I'm sure you're fine sharing it. Um, like these people weren't really readers of the books, you know, um, Bruce is an incredibly generous and open-hearted man who has a mind for helping heal the wounded and, you know, brought a lot of like veterans and people who uh, needed help and support and community. But a lot of these people had their own personal issues and things. And so what I'm trying to do with Bruce is to help him, you know, bring in more readers of the books and having this already like aligned, um, these aligned people coming in, you know, with the mission. Um, so that's kind of what he's talking about there. Yeah. And by the way, guys, I dropped that quote that Anastasia said about the coronavirus in the chat. So if you guys want to read it, um, that is the that is the quote that she said about it. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Go ahead. Good. Oh. Um, are you referring to looking for how to accept people onto like who's going to be part of the settlement? Is that like developing a process for that? Is that what you guys were talking about just recently? Yep. Um, yeah. I would love to be part of that conversation, actually, because I did, the community that I currently live at, um, as part of the process of developing that, we call it the RAP process, just like a residency appro approval process, but it's been many years in the making, and um, it's, I've learned a ton, <laughs> I've learned so much about this whole process of, like, accepting people, and how do you, and, and just, like, interviewing people, and, and the way, where we started out was having just people who could pay rent, you know, pay rent on the property, and whatever, and then it eventually, to a point where now we have a waiting list of like a, a long waiting list of people to get in you know that, that want to come like live here or go to school here or any any, any number of things but anyway i would, it, would love to be part of that conversation if it's, if it's possible That's awesome let's do it yeah that would be awesome because you got the experience and i have just you know uh every fairy ideas on how it should work you have practical experience on how it does work yeah i'd love to help so how, how can we make this connection? Should we do email or Elizabeth, you get in touch with me and I'll link us up with Bruce. How about that? Yeah, that sounds great. I'm on the community platform as well. I will, I'm gonna private message you my phone number um, because Bruce is quite the texter. So there you go. Let's, let's make that happen. Thank you. And you, you know, and, and I'll hook you up. We'll hook up a big part of me organizing is Nicole, my girlfriend. She's, um, 
she'll she lives in Tennessee and she's coming out for this Champs Expo show and we're going to put together this and that's that's and her best friend is the one that bought the land, uh, Taisha. And so they're in a rush to get these protocols set up. And so we'll, we'll work on that. And she does works with a, a software program called Monday.com. And it's an it okay. organized project. Manager. Do you know that, Gabriel? Yeah, yeah. It's like a task manager like uh, Asana or one of those other things. Yeah. Yeah. But I've never used one. I don't know how it compares to any of the others. But to me, it's fascinating because it's very, it's way better than not using it. So we may use that to get, but we all know that this to is a critical flow, right? Like you're going to have a, a check process on the platform. Right. Yeah. And, yep. and, and really do that's other than me selling the CBDA and CBDGs, because I could literally write a, up to $100 million of business, maybe less, maybe more. Because like I said, what do you think people will pay for the cure for coronavirus? And I'm not saying it's a cure. I'm saying the media is saying that. All right. Yeah. That study up in Oregon that just came out about it. But after we get to run through that next week, we got the next critical thing is to um, get the, the, the induction process or the vetting process really hammered out. And I will, I will connect us with, you know, everybody I know in Russia and get, you know, the input of, you know, really successful King's Domain settlements in Russia and get some of their documents and their processes too, because it's, it's fascinating. It's very good, Bruce. I, I think you'd be excited to see what they've got. Yeah, and then there's places like the farm in Tennessee, Stephen Gaskin's farm. They have an induction process, but they won't tell you because they don't want people to know about their community. It's the largest and oldest and most probably successful intentional community in America, they, but they don't publish that sort of secret. Then that, the, the Paramahansa Merokananda community is what is it? Ananda? Amanda? Not Ananda. Ananda. Do they have an induction process? They do. I'm good friends with a lot of the leadership there, yeah. Okay. I can, then, I, can uh, I can ask my friend. I was just talking to one of my friends who's one of the founding members of Ananda today, um, and I can ask him about that if he knows anything. We can, we can get that information. Yeah, because you've got models from people that have been doing it for 40, 50, 10, and even five years. Yeah. They're all more experienced than I am. I don't have a clue. The Russian stuff is really good. I'm going to be excited to, to share that with That's you. That's stuff I want to see the most because I think yeah. – that's the we highest send the link of our last Russian America exchange call to whoever it is that is working on these protocols. I can send you that link if you want, because he literally talked about it there. Like this is a guy who has like a 20 plus year old settlement and it's super successful. But um, anyway, we've got a lot. That's of That's really. Yeah. I mean, it's a three hour video, Bruce. It's questions and answers and a huge presentation from this guy about how to do this like step by step. He talks about his whole process there. Like, and you'll send me a link? You'll text yeah, me a link? I'll see you right now. See, so guys, this is the community call. This is what we do. We're, and, then, and then the thing is that what Bruce and I were planning is that once we've got the process outlined for his settlement, we um, want to share it publicly with everybody. So we want to put out a template through the foundation so that way you guys can have a rough outline to work from you know, uh, and adapt to your own situations. So this is all stuff that will get crowd, you know, crowdsourced out to everybody as it gets developed, you know. Uh, so yeah, guys, I hope this has been interesting to you. We're two hours in. How's everybody feeling? <laughs> hey, you guys want to meet a Russian spy? Let's do it. I don't think I've ever met Svetlana, so this will be cool. All right, she's not nice, especially this time of day. No. <laughs> I'm more at a time, but I'm getting hungry. I gotta get some food. Cool. I'm hungry. Darling, I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's talk soon, Bruce. I'm looking forward to it. Did, you, did, you, did the camera get her? A little bit. She was uh, incognito. She was in disguise. She was blended in. Okay. <laughs> by, the way, she, by the way, she was convicted of espionage. She was the largest spy case of the 80s. The number one show in the history of 60 Minutes is a show on her. 60 million people watched it from around the world. Made the best of 60 Minutes for the decade of the 80s. Mike Walsh remembers 25 years of 60 Minutes and 35 years of 60 Minutes. 
she was really a Russian spy. When I went to prison for being the king of pot, marijuana smuggler, I went to co-ed prisons. So my best friends were spies, assassins, terrorists, hijackers, jewel thieves, bank robbers, and that's just the females. Now I had a crush on my day, the Puerto Rican terrorist, but she went with Mikey, the other smuggler, and I ended up with the Russian spy. So, but she's my ex-wife and she's, um, but I take care of her on our kin's, on our kin's domain out here. And it's likely that some of my family members were involved in the Puerto Rican terrorist stuff you talked about from decades and decades ago, which is crazy. Um, so anyway, that's an interesting thing. Oh, Aria, did she leave already? I wanted to say bye. Um, yeah, Aria is amazing. All right, guys, I think we're going to start wrapping this one up. This has been a pretty epic call. I'm really grateful for everybody taking the time to join. This is a bi-weekly thing, so remember that we're here every two weeks. We've got all kinds of events happening every week. If you've got friends in Europe, we do a European community connection call now. So we've got all these things happening. All this is going to be up on YouTube, by the way, um, so that the greater community can benefit from our conversations here. So yeah, thank you all. I'll look at the camera now because I've got the camera over here on the side. But uh, thank you guys so much. Very grateful for your time. Um, can anybody, ju I just want to get a little bit of feedback about how you guys are feeling about this call. Can you guys uh, chime in real quick before we get out of here? Well, this is exactly what Anison just said would happen. We would be making these connections, these very benevol benevolent, uh, dialed in, awesome, you know, millionaire, billionaire <laughs> kind of people. There's Bruce, it's really awesome. I don't know if you're still here, but Bruce, it's awesome to have met you and to know you and to have you in this space. And um, it's, it's so, ex I'm just so excited. I feel like so many doors have opened up, uh, not just with these types of connections, but also with the music. This was huge. Like I got chills, you know, this is really going to be one of the, um, this is really gonna propel us and really unify us now as a community. So um, I'm just so grateful to be here. And this was one of the, one of the best community calls I've, I've been on. Thank you so much. There we go. My pleasure. It, for me, it's been awesome to see all you guys out there, you know, and see the connections that we made on this call. One for what I need right now immediately, which is the vetting process, you know, two to see this, everybody likes music because I'm a music illiterate. And so it's not my strong suit, but I know the power of music. I know how important it is. And, you know, 90% of the people I meet end up being musicians for some, somehow. Um, and it's great to see, you know, all these, all you young guys. It's like, it reminds me of the 60s again. See, I have a historical perspective. I went through the 60s. This is the 60s all over again, which anyone who's familiar with the, the term 40-year pendulum swing, this is the 40-year pendulum swing. There's more concerts and transformational festivals than there was ever since the 60s. There's actually more than there was in the 60s when we used to call them pop festivals and music festivals. Pop festivals, right. That's what they were called back then. Yeah, see, so, so I see this happening all over again and it's wonderful to see you guys starting to emerge with such a powerful, you know, binding um, uh, mindset, which is the Ringing Seas of Russia, series of books. It's been translated 23 languages. This is a worldwide movement. This is friggin' awesome. You know, it's, we, it's way more than we had. It's everything we had in the 60s times a thousand. You know, we didn't have rich guys like me, you know, supporting the movement. You know, they were the establishment. They were assholes. <laughs> so, right. you know, like they them. not the way now, that you are. Right. Now, there's a lot of me's out there. There's a lot of guys like me with the kind of money I command you know than you'd ever imagine i mean where was this that in the 60s it didn't exist we exist now and it's not just me there's hundreds of guys with way more money than i have even right. wanting to that jump on aboard this movement all we need to so, do is find them once we publish these books and the foundation gets out there we're going to be connecting everybody and it's going to be a huge fellowship i mean guys we're at the, the tipping point here you know it's it's just Prepare yourself because the next decade is going to be insane. So let's just say that. And by the way, on, on, the, on the last interview I did, I'll drop a link for the interview for anyone who's interested. Bruce, we did this interview. I got like 30,000 views on it about the Ringing Cedars. Uh, the channel's got 410,000 subscribers. And um, anyway, a bunch of people were saying what you're saying, Bruce. They were saying that, you know, they're seeing the 60s and that kind of spirit 
coming alive again. So it's a beautiful thing. And there's a lot of us. There's 78 million post-war baby boom generation. So we're, we're, we're a huge part of the demographics and we're all grown up now. And a lot of us are still spiritually conscious from the 60s. And we got a lot of money now. That's right. Beautiful. Well, on I can that- I give some feedback too quick. Yeah, um, just, uh, Gabriel, I really wanted to appreciate uh, your facilitation of this. Um, I really I enjoyed the popcorn style. You know, just Ooh, asking questions and seeing who right wanna- By the way, I can't see for some reason. Can't see me? Uh, I just can't see who's speaking. I can't tell for some reason. Oh, it's Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now I see you. All right. My bad. I just didn't see. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, and I appreciate how fast you delivered all the information over in the sidebar and in the chat. And um, I got so much out of this today. I've been really, I've been really asking and you know praying for to figure out how I can actually help um, move, move this foundation forward and move this whole movement forward. Yeah. And um, I got my answer today. I mean, I have seven years of experience of living in, in a pretty active community here in Oregon, and, um, and and especially with the governance of it and all that. And so I just have I'm. I'm really grateful that I spoke up and so that I could help maybe with that process. That's exciting. You know, Thank he, you so much for facilitating us. He, he who sees the work is best suited for it, you know? And <laughs> I, I said this to Ariane a long time ago and look at what all the amazing things that she's done. And I'm excited that, you know, that, um, that you're here and I'm glad that this brought value to you and that these connections are being made because we're all just pieces of the puzzle, you know? And we all play our very own vital role, like organs in the body, you know? And, um, I'm, I'm excited that this was able to happen. So I will be connecting you with Bruce. Please make sure to text me and we will make all that happen. And Elizabeth, you're what, two hours from Medford? Uh, three. Three, okay. Yes. Three snowy hours right now. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna get cold. I mean, it's been like in the 20s, 20s, 30s, but right now it's like 50, so it's a swing. But I think it's gonna get cold and snow this week, yeah. <laughs> Gabriel, I just want to say thank you so much. I've been uh, missing a bunch of the calls recently, but I, I was like, oh, get in. Before. I'm 30 minutes late, but I jumped in and it came right into the part where you guys were talking about music. And that's really, you know, I'm really excited about that. And I'd love to help out in any way with any music related stuff. For sure. Um, and then, yeah, just going into all the cool stuff about like how this, you know, it just makes like we all kind of know these things, but then talking about it and really saying it out loud makes it feel so much more real like all the ways that we can finance things and all the ways that we can make it work together. It really is um, powerful. So glad to be back on the call again. I'm really glad. Um, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you always, you know, join us. It's always good to see you and connect with you and the energy that you bring. And, um, you know, everything is perfect. And, and I'm excited that this will go on YouTube and a bunch of people will be inspired by what we have to say here too. You know, all, I'm excited that we're going to be posting these now because so much insight and knowledge gets shared on these calls. And finally, we can start to scale that out to the larger community. We're doing something that nobody else in the Ringing Cedars movement anywhere is doing, guys. Just newsflash alert. Like, I don't even think they're doing stuff like this in, in Russia. And if they do, it's on a local scale where um, not that many people are aware, like in the way that we're doing it. So we're doing something unique and beautiful, and it's going to continue to grow. And I'm super grateful that you guys are all here. So thank you so and much. Congrats on your upcoming new full-time position. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can run my foundation and, and serve the people. I'm here, God put me here to build this movement. That's what I'm here for. That's what a lot of us are here for. And uh, I'm excited to be doing my, my mission, you know, um, by the grace of God, that's how all those things come about. And so, um, yeah, thank you guys very much. Have a beautiful, blessed evening i'm excited to see you all on the next call if you guys are able to make it um and and yeah see you guys soon hey lauren i want to reach out to you real fast um so if you are interested in kind of like joining um like arian and Rhea and i have like started to collaborate on this album and it sounds like you're really i'm getting like chills it sounds like you're all into like music so if you are like totally and anybody else here um, who feels called to like, please like reach out over telegram or the community platform. Um, let's get some sounds going. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we can distribute That'd it all great. through the Anastasia publishing company that all expected to be set up by the end of the year. We get it done. Perfect. Amazing. 
Yep. Cool. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm so excited about that. Promote everything that you guys create. This is a just a way for people becoming aware of the music behind the movement. You know, um, being the bards and spreading the message and purifying the hearts the way that Anastasia says. So we're gonna get this done. Nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, my dear friends. So good um, to see you all. <laughs> likewise. Thank you for joining, Megan. It's always a pleasure to see you and have you here. So good to see you. And I just, I wanted to say one thing. I know we're trying to end, but. Yeah, it's all good. I love it. These calls don't end, you know what I mean? <laughs> I get so inspired by these calls. And I just, you know, obviously from a business side or uh, entrepreneurial or accounting or finance, anything I can do to help, I'm freeing up my time so that I can be more helpful. Yeah. Um, from current business to move into this sort of thing. But anyway. And Megan, also, can, you, can you say what you do just because I don't think Bruce is aware. Oh, I am. Um, I, uh, I have an accounting firm. I, I, I have, uh, I like to learn a lot. So I have, I do real estate, accounting, tax, all that stuff. Um, but where are I, you? Where are you? I'm in Hawaii. I'm on the big Island. Okay. Yeah. Which I would love to start a community here, but it's a, it's a little different. Anyhow, my goal, my passion, if it's through this foundation or I mean, it feels like this is a right spot, is to create this new economics that's based in love first, money after, or whatever it is, facilitating the love, right? So if you're having a business deal, you connect on a human level, and then you make the deal. So you know how that's going to work out. I, I have this vision boarding session this summer when I come to California, so kind of talk about these things. I don't know how I fit into it, but I'm here. <laughs> Megan, I want to I wanna say if um, Ellen, Ellen, Mary, and I have been working for the past like month or so um, on creating something exactly what you're talking about, um, conscious currency, you know, like yeah. we're in like, we've looked into creating our own cryptocurrency, which I don't really like that idea, but basically you can, you know, creating a system that it's hard because we'll have to translate it back into regular money. So we, we're not doing that as of right now, but that's totally what we're working towards. And um, some real steps are being taken. So I would love if you're interested, um, like let's connect like for sure. Even just, I really like brainstorming sessions. So if I yeah, can... me too. Right. Um, but I was just going to say one thing. The one thing I was going to say was we had uh, Elizabeth this morning uh, in our in our um, healing vision, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally was seeing you like healed and pure and then like becoming um, a, a soldier for this movement. I don't know, that was my picture. So when you made this connection today, I just, I thought that was so wonderful. But I saw you all this morning shining bright and then picturing what it's going to do, you know, vibrating and echoing and rippling into the future. And then this happened. So I just love it. I love being on these. I love what gets sparked. It's such a, you know, exponential effect that each person creates and, and brings to their local community. So anyway, <laughs> good to see you. This. That's the community <laughs> connection call, you know. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Great. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, yeah, good to see you all. All right, my dear friends, have a wonderful, blessed night. Thank you for your time. We'll be back here in two weeks. Check out the website for all the events we're doing. You guys probably all know the events we're doing. And uh, <laughs> see you guys again soon. Okay. Bruce, I texted you, by the way. Bye. Thank you. Yep. Take care, you guys. Okay. Bye. See you later.